Welcome to a special edition of CCD Today, where we're going to start to bring you a series of short and to the point interviews. And we're going to start with why science matters when it comes to delegation. And with me to speak about this, I've got Christopher Portman, who's one of the scientists at Concordium. Welcome, Christopher. Thank you. It is really great to be here. Christopher, together with ETH Zurich and the rest of the Concordium team, you've been working on the delegation model. Now, I wanted to ask you, why does science matter when it comes to delegation? Well, the one line answer is that we don't want to introduce a security flaw. So maybe let me expand a bit on that and say why, what kind of problems could arise with delegation. Let's just go back a bit to what a proof of stake blockchain is or how it works. The idea is that every, um, we call them bakers on Concordium, they could be called miners or validators in, in, in um, other blockchains. Um, every baker has a certain probability to uh, bake a block, which is proportional to their stake. So that's the amount of tokens that they have, CCD on Concordium, the amount of tokens that they have locked in, in the blockchain. Um, and the idea for doing this is a security reason. In order to control the, the, the blockchain to take over, dishonest parties would need to control, let's say one third of the tokens, which is a lot of money, which makes it very, very hard to do. Um, so when we write a security proof for a blockchain, we generally prove that you need you know, this amount, say one third of the tokens to, to, to attack the system. Um, but for that assumption to be meaningful, we should always make sure that it actually is expensive to, to own one third of the, of the tokens. Um, not only expensive to own them, but then if you attack the, the system, um, your, the tokens will lose value and you're going to lose them because you have skin in the game because you own these tokens. And if we aren't careful, we might introduce a loophole making it possible to control tokens without actually owning them. Uh, we've seen attacks in the blockchains recently, which use um, flash loans where someone borrows a large amount of tokens for just a few seconds, performs the attack and reimburses the loan. This costs the next to nothing and they control a huge amount of the stake. So now um, let's go to delegation. So what is delegation? The idea of delegation is someone who owns tokens but doesn't want to be a baker um, could lend the, the, the voting power that these tokens uh, give them to a baker and that this baker would then bake using their own tokens and the tokens of all these, these delegators that lend them the, 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 the power and increase their probability of baking blocks, increase their rewards. And then they would share some of the rewards with these delegators that, that lend them the, 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 the power of their tokens. So that looks like a win-win situation because it's going to favor good, good bakers since good bakers um, will produce more blocks and then of course delegators will want to go to them. And it encourages people to own tokens and invest them in the system. So um, everybody wins in it. But when we think about it a bit more, we run the risk of introducing a, a loophole like I mentioned before, because now a baker can control a whole bunch of tokens which they don't own. It doesn't, isn't expensive anymore to, to, to control tokens or isn't as expensive as buying them. You need to run a good baker and have people lend them to you. And you also have less skin in the game because if you do something malicious and the tokens crash, well, they weren't your tokens, they were someone else's tokens. So we have to be really careful with delegation. We have to analyze the situation. And what we did to try and have a delegation model, which is something great, but at the same time not introduce security loopholes, was to have two measures. The first is that um, a baker cannot be lent too many tokens. It's limited by the amount of uh, tokens they have themselves. So uh, at the moment, in the system we're going to be rolling out in June, um, the baker can be lent at most twice the amount of tokens they already own. And the other um, thing we do is that the rewards given to the delegators cannot be set arbitrarily by the bakers. Because if they do that, dishonest bakers could try and just undercut all the honest bakers and then get all, all, all the tokens from delegators. So we have a fixed, a fixed uh, reward, which is given to, to delegators. And with these two measures, we can still have delegation um, while at the same time um, keeping high security. That's interesting, Christopher. So with that in mind, can you explain some of the considerations that you had to have when designing Concordium's delegation model? Well, apart from the security issues, which I already explained, um, the other thing we need to consider is how do we set all the parameters, what are the rewards going to be, uh, etc. And here we have um, competing interests. We have the bakers on one hand, we have the delegators, we have the users, and depending on how we set the parameters, we favor you know, one party over the other. So we try to find some kind of middle point, which was good for everyone. 
Now, um, once we roll it out, we will see the feedback we get from, from the community and uh, there are always options of, of adjusting parameters data, but we hope that um, everyone will be happy with the way we have uh, set delegation up. Thank you so much, Christopher, for speaking with us today. Really interesting. Thank you too, it was a pleasure. Great to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us today at CCD. Now, if you'd like to find out a little bit more about the research and technology at Concordium, do check out concordium.com. And also let us know if you like this new format. Remember to like and subscribe. I'm Claire Ross Brown, and I'll see you very soon.